Hello everybody, thanks again for tuning into my YouTube channel. I can't believe since last week when I posted the video up, uh, we've gone over 10,000 subscribers, which is great. I really appreciate your support here. And if you do like the videos, obviously like them. If you do want to subscribe, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell in the corner there on the left-hand side, and you will get notifications of future updates. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Lightroom and performance, more specifically about performance and the tips and tricks that I have that I use to try and get the best out of my Lightroom catalogs. So I'm using the latest version of Lightroom, Creative Cloud, but all of the tips today are going to work across any version of Lightroom, I think. So even if you're using Lightroom 6 and the non-subscription based version, then I think these tips will work, certainly most of them at least. Now, I obviously understand that many people use different software packages. I also use Alien Skin Exposure. I also use Silky Picks, believe it or not, for some images. And there are different ways of doing everything and different ways of editing. This is gonna be my way of showing you how I get the best out of Lightroom itself. Now, it's very true that Adobe have made great leaps and bounds over the last 12 months or so in terms of speeding up Lightroom itself. It's a lot quicker than it used to be. However, it's still a little bit slow in places. There are still things that we can do in the interface itself, specifically and on our computers, to make it work a little bit quicker and help us get through our workflow quicker. Now many of these tips are public, you know, I've got these tips from other places, from other websites, there's a lot of good stuff actually on the Adobe website itself. So I'm just kind of collating everything that I use to make my Lightroom workflow quick. And it is quick, and the performance is quick. Now it's true also that I do have a pretty fast machine, I've got a machine with uh, 64 gig of RAM and a couple of SSDs, solid state drives in there, etc. But you know, I'm a professional photographer, so I kind of demand that stuff, I need that stuff. Um, now I know not all of you are going to have powerful or certainly super powerful machines, but these tips also are the ones that I will use on my Surface Book, my laptop, which is just 16 gig of RAM, and you know it's a much more low spec machine, and these tips and these kind of performance enhancements to the software that I'm about to talk to you about will affect you in a positive way, no matter what application, no matter what computer you're using, I should say. Okay, so let's go, let's dig into Lightroom, and hopefully you'll get some useful tips and be able to take away some stuff to help you and your workflow on Lightroom in the future. Okay. Tip number one then. The first thing to be aware of is that Lightroom does work much better with solid state drives. I have a couple of internal solid state drives in my machine. They are one terabyte each and each one of the Lightroom catalogs, whenever I'm working on them, will always be on one of those solid state drives. It's not imperative, of course, but you know, if you're serious about this stuff, then you might want to look at, at least if you're upgrading your PC soon or your Macintosh soon, then have a look at machines that have solid state drives. Tip number two is to always switch off things like the Creative Cloud Sync, the address lookup, face detection, all of that kind of stuff. And of course, if you need it on, you need it on. It depends on your collections and everything else that you're doing. But I find that if I switch that off or have it off by default, then it's not going to interfere with anything. The import process, it just doesn't, you know, doesn't get involved. I don't need it for my weddings or anything. So I'm just turning it off and that will speed things up. Okay, let's head up to Edit and then Preferences. And on the Performance tab, there's a few things we need to talk about in this dialog box. The first thing is the Use Graphics Processor option. Now, I have that switched on, it works really well, but in some cases, it may well be optimal for you to switch that off. So if you're having real kind of refresh issues, then try switching that off and see how you get on. Typically, I think you probably want that on, especially if you've got a supported graphics card. The NVIDIA ones, I think, are pretty much all supported. So try switching that on and off and see how you get on. So that was tip number three. And tip number four in the same dialog box is to discuss a little bit about this camera raw cache setting that we can see just underneath. You see, mine says location E raw cache. Now you can choose to put that location wherever you want on your computer. Again, I have that on a solid state drive. Really important to have that on a solid state drive. You'll see the maximum size there as well. I think the default is three and really you want at least 10. I have it set to 100 gigabytes, I have plenty of space for that, and that really makes the files fly. It's, it's really helpful to do that. So all of that is on the performance tab. So on that dialog, if we now go down to the catalog settings, tip number five is the option there we have for automatically write changes into XMP. Now, I would suggest you switch that off rather than on, and that's really useful if you are taking your raw images into something like Bridge and you want to inherit the changes. But, you know, if you're not doing that very often, switching that option off will definitely speed things up. So that was tip number five, switch off the automatically write to XMP. 
Now on the same dialog, you can go across to file handling in the middle, just there, right there, file handling, if I click on it properly. And you have an option there, this is tip number seven for standard preview size. So you wanna really set that to be close to the widest um, pixel edge that you're using on your screen. So if you've got a very big screen resolution, set that to a wide edge. If you're using a very small screen resolution, set that to a more narrow edge. That comes up quite often on the Adobe forum, so it's obviously something that Adobe have mentioned in the past. Now the next option on here is automatically discard one-to-one -one previews. So this is tip number eight. Now you wanna leave that really for as long as possible because every time these one-to-one -one previews are discarded, they have to get rebuilt. So if you have the space, then just set it to never. You don't need to be rebuilding those one-to-one -one previews very often. And I will typically set it to never for my catalogs because I just don't want I don't want Lightroom to be rebuilding those. And when I come into it after maybe it's 29 days, 30 days, whatever, and then it suddenly starts rebuilding the previews. I don't need to, I've got the space for it. If space is a premium for you on your computer, then you might want to set that to be 30 days or even less, but try and keep that to be discarded as long as possible. So keep those files as long as possible. Now tip number nine is pretty simple. It's to optimize the catalog. How many of us do this? How, many, how often do you do it? If your catalog is slowing down, then just go into the optimize option and do it. You just do it. It takes moments really for depending on the size of the catalog. Of course, if you've got a very big catalog. That's going to take quite a while, but it's worth doing it. Definitely something that Adobe recommend. Now, tip number 10, we pop into the develop module for this, and that's the history. Now, you're probably not gonna be doing this for wedding shoots or street shoots where you've got lots of images, but you know, if you have got images, particular images, maybe you're doing portraits, you're doing a lot of retouching, and they're slowing down, you're editing them and they're slowing down, clear that history out because as long as you're happy that you're at a point, you're at a state where that image is ready and it's done, if you clear that history out, it's gonna stop having to re-render that each time you load that up and it will speed things up. I found that definitely on images that I've done a lot of individual work into. So if you're using spot removal or using gradient filters or anything like that, clearing the history out will actually speed things up. Tip number 11 is to minimize the use of presets or minimize the amount of presets that are installed on your computer. So the presets you can see them there on the left hand side. And I think that, you know, if you're anything like me, you will have had hundreds of presets over the years. But the fact is the more you have in that folder there on the left hand side, the slower things are gonna be. So just try and keep that to a minimum, keep it down to the ones that you use all the time, the ones you use regularly. And, you know, just have a little bit of a spring clean every now and again, take out the ones, the test ones that you've created or the third party ones you've bought that you no longer use. Just keep it clean, keep it simple, use the ones that you are gonna use regularly. So talking of presets, tip number 12 is if we go into the library and we're going to look at all of the images there in the, in the view, in the grid view, tip number 12 is to use a very small view, use a very small thumbnail view when you're applying user presets or any kind of preset in there. The reason for that, especially if you, if you imagine, I've only got a few images here, but if you imagine there's 500 images in there, when you have those set to large thumbnails, every time you select the, um, the new preset you're gonna apply, you see Lightroom starts applying them one by one and you'll see them all happening in front of you. Now, if you have a smaller set of thumbnails, it's just a bit quicker. And also another tip here is to scroll down and make sure that all of those thumbnails have been rendered. And that will happen quicker with smaller thumbnails, it's simple as that. So make sure that you have those set to, when you're applying a preset to the whole set of images, make sure your thumbnails are small and make sure you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the images in the uh, thumbnail view so that the Lightroom can apply those presets much quicker. So for tip number 14, we are going to head over to the develop module. I'm just gonna click on that and head over, pick one of the images and I'm going to, explain why I don't have the histogram showing by default. And the reason for that is because it, to me at least, it seems to slow things down when I'm rendering those images, when I'm skipping between the images. Having the histogram displayed all of the time, for me, certainly seems to slow things down. So try and close that off. And in fact, all of that stuff on the right-hand side in the develop module, the less you have displayed there, or the less you have kind of on the screen, it does feel to me the quicker it is. To that end, I'll use solo mode, which means that I can only open up one of the panels that I'm using at any one time. Solo mode's pretty good as well, just for keeping the interface quite clean and, and sweet when you're moving between the images. So that's solo mode on the right-hand side. 
And while we're here, by the way, you can also just switch off. I don't think this particularly helps performance, but switch off all of the stuff at the top that you don't need. I don't need anything apart from library and develop. I just switch all of the other stuff off. It's just easier and quicker for me. And tip 15 is to basically not use Lightroom for the culling process. I use Photo Mechanic. There's lots of other options out there. Uh, Photo Mechanic is really good. It's I think it's about $100. And it's so quick for me to just use Photo Mechanic to flip through the images that I want to keep. And I'll just mark them with one. In my case, you obviously will do it in your own particular way. And the images that I'm going to keep are the ones that I'll take into Lightroom. Look how quick it is at skipping between those images. And I can just do my selections so much quicker, so much easier to cull in something external to Lightroom. And what that means is that the images that I've selected in Photo Mechanic are the only images that are going to make it into the Lightroom catalog. I don't need to have, if I've done, if I've got 1500 images from a wedding and I'm going to edit 500 and give them to the client, I don't need those other thousand images in there. So I'll just drag them across from Photo Mechanic and only have the images in Lightroom that I'm going to edit. And on that point, tip number 16 is in the import dialog box and it's about building previews. Build one-to-one -one previews if you have the space. It takes a little bit longer on the import to do this, but if you're importing lots of images, go and make a cup of coffee or whatever. But when you're editing, it's going to make things a lot easier. So one-to-one -one previews always are a must for me. Tip 17 while we are in the import dialog is to use import presets. So you can see here I have all my import presets and really if I select KMP first standard what happens then is I'm telling Lightroom to apply my metadata preset and also to apply my develop settings preset. So anything that you find yourself doing upon import to almost every image that might be a little bit of tone curve or a little bit of brightness or whatever it is then create a preset, an import preset, that will run that develop preset. So that's tip number 17. Use the import presets to activate your develop presets and your metadata presets. Uh, we're nearly at the end now, don't worry. So um, tip number 18 is back in the develop uh, module, we'll cancel out of this, is to apply your uh, things like um, sharpening and noise reduction to apply those at the end of your develop pre at the end of your develop process. So I'm going to click into the details section here, and this is where I have all of my kind of noise and sharpening and everything. And this is the stuff that needs to be done at the end because if you do this at the beginning, then every single time you load that image up, it's getting applied, and this is one of the most uh, processor sensitive or processor hungry parts of the Lightroom application. So I use, I help to help myself, I use smart collections there on the left hand side, you can see them, and I will group my images by ISO rating. So by doing that, I can easily go in at the end, do all my edits, do everything I need to do, and go in right at the very end and apply noise reduction based on an ISO level. So you'll see here, I'll take up that, I'll open up that collection which has three images in it and you can see how that collection is built. It's very straightforward, just double click on a smart collection and you can build your own parameters in there. And I will go, I'll adjust the noise for one image, for the first one in the group, there may be 300 images in here, you never know. Go to develop settings, sync settings and then just select noise reduction and sync that right across all of the images in that smart collection. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully some of those tips were useful and will get you up and running quicker with Lightroom at least. Uh, leave any comments below. Of course, I will answer them as soon as possible. I always try and get back to them. And if you do want to help me out, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me. Uh, like the video, share the video, of course. Now, over the coming months, I'm trying to formalize the way that I build this channel. I'm trying to formalize the content that I put on there. At the moment, it's very random. And I'm trying to figure out what people want to see, what people want me to talk about. And to that end, I think so far, I've got kind of three different schedules I'm going to do. The business of um, wedding photography, wedding photography itself, street photography, and more kind of technical Fujifilm stuff itself. So I'm going to probably concentrate on those three types of strands um, but please leave comments below let me know email me whatever you want to do um, and hopefully we can build this channel together and make something out of it that's useful okay thanks very much and hopefully I shall see you next time